living in the watershed of the Mississippi River. It's a very special place. Rich soils, a wonderful climate, great people. lots of wildlife. Don't tell anybody, but this is a really special part of our country. In a hundred years, four generations have lived on this farm, and there will be many more generations. Got a profound responsibility to take care of the land for the, the people that I'll never know that'll come in the future. We've been farming the valley since 1848. So it's very important to me that we leave the farm in better condition than when I found it. We used to plow everything, we have a lot of heavy tillage. All the nutrients, a large share of them, were applied with good intentions to get a better crop. In a heavy rain event, they went right into the water. All of these streams run to the Mississippi, and the Mississippi goes to the lower basin. So, uh, you know, all the problems that we create, unfortunately, end up in their lap. Coming back to Iowa, it was twofold. I wanted to grow my own food. I wanted to know where food came from. I also wanted to be a part of something bigger, something that I could help make change. Every little part here on our farm absolutely affects things that are going on in the bigger river. Across much of the Corn Belt, we grow two plants, corn and soybeans, that only grow for six months out of the year. Because we don't grow winter plants anymore, our soils are unprotected and vulnerable. We have massive opportunity for loss. We lose nitrogen, we lose phosphorus, and we lose soil through soil erosion. And as that water moves through the system, it is carrying nitrate nitrogen with it into surface water and then being moved down into the Gulf of Mexico where it has a major impact on that ecosystem. Yes, we, we hear about it, we, we read about it in the news about what's happening in, down in New Orleans and the, and the Gulf. We are partially responsible for that. I think everyone needs to take responsibility in some way. Are these challenges on the Mississippi solvable? I think so. Cover crops are probably the corner post of a nutrient reduction strategy in terms of reducing nitrate loads into the Gulf of Mexico. Okay, we're looking at some uh, Surai cover crop that I flew on in the middle of September. We're harvesting here mid-October and putting annual ryegrass on. Very cost effective, and even though this ground is pretty flat, the nutrients will get away from us on these heavy rains we have, so we're putting cover crop on every acre. We're producing here at the University of Minnesota a set of cover crops that have economic value, as well as environmental protection. These crops develop very well in the fall. They are the first things to green up in the spring, holding water and nitrate nitrogen in place, reducing the amount of nitrogen that's moving through the system by about 95%. I started rotational grazing and it worked amazingly well. We have about 18 paddocks and we simply let nature heal itself. We move the cattle every three to five days. We get about 40% more forage production by letting the plants rest. It's better for water quality because we never have any tillage on the farm. Over here to our left is the new constructed wetland. A lot of the plants that are in there uh, are designed to filter out any nitrates and phosphates. By doing this, it should be possible to remove lots of nutrients from the water before they get to the Mississippi River Basin. Here in Arkansas, Louisiana, and Mississippi, about 700,000 acres have been restored back into wetlands and bottom and hardwoods. Is it my feeling that the land was meant to be in trees and not farmland or beans? I definitely think that. There's better soil, there's much better soil. This is land that probably never should have been cleared in the first place. The trees being on the property now is definitely the best use for this property, there's no doubt. We're conserving water. We don't have a runoff from a farm any longer. We're holding water. We're bringing in wildlife habitat. Many times these landowners will look at restoring a lot of these lands that are not very productive back into wetlands and bottom and hardwoods. And they also increase their overall farm profitabilities. We're seeing a lot less erosion in terms of sediment going into our waterways. And certainly with that, we're seeing a lot less fertilizers and pesticides that are running off. The problem that it will take a long time to fix, but you know, we need to start one watershed, one farm at a time. It takes a united effort all across the Mississippi watershed. It's gonna take time, it's gonna take energy, and if we all pull together, we're gonna to win this fight.